Hallelujah. It's so nice to be in your presence. Uh, what just happened is really funny because the first time I, I met Uncle, um, I think I was either about four, four years old. Four. So you can imagine uh, if I was hugging him then I'll have been hugging his legs. Uh, so we really praise the Lord and um, I've, I've uh, watched from afar so much of what the Lord has been doing here. I once visited in 2008, but it was, um, it was all too brief. But honestly, I, I think saying, talking about those things now is slightly trivial because um, what we've just experienced uh, in the last uh, hour plus has been nothing short of um, remarkable. Um, I was just taking time listening to all the songs that were being sung, the, 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 the train of thought that was there, and I just thought, well, I don't even know if I have anything to share again. It's all been spoken, you know, from one song to the other, and um, I felt, well, it's still okay if I try to tie some things up, and I just want to say a few things about, um, about revival. And again, I don't want to spend too long, because this is a time for prayer. and. Um, you know, I spent, I spent a, a huge amount of my time with Uncle yesterday, and I explained to him I was traveling in and I had something to do, and this issue of revival came up, and, um, and I was just, we went for a, a prayer meeting yesterday again, I was so touched by that, and so today I said, well, let me just look into the scriptures and say one or two things about revival, and I was hearing the songs and the prayers, we were talking about praying, for ourselves, praying for our families, then praying for um, our marketplace, and, uh, and then the city and the nation. Now, I would love to go through Acts 1 to 4 with you, but there's no, obviously no time for that. So I would only read Acts 4, some parts of Acts 4, to see something about revival. Um, you know, there's often a statement I like to make, which says that quite often uh, with people, we have the same... Um, dictionaries, but we don't have the same vocabularies. You know, I mean, we have the same vocabularies, but we don't have the same dictionaries. Many times we use the same words, but actually we don't know, we, we often mean different things. And usually when we talk about revival, even though we don't see the word itself in the Bible, there are certain things that we know we are looking for. But to what end? What are we looking for when we ask revival? And what, to what goal is there revival? That is very important because if we are not careful, we can define a revival to be, you know, coming for meetings and having a very good time or having a very good feeling or um, seeing certain acts of demonstration. But if we look at, just look from Acts 1 to 4 and see actually the beginning of a revival that started in a particular time and will continue until the Lord returns. We can see elements of that so that when we are praying, and I think we'll still pray some more, we can say here are some of the things that we are looking for. So let me first say that when we are looking for revival, especially as you saw with all the songs that were sung, you remember some of the songs, It's All About You? We are going uh, back to the heart of worship. It's all about you. Um, 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 the, the, I cannot do without you. The first thing we have to say about revival is that it's not about us. Any revival that is man-centered is emotion that is being clouded with some form of spirituality. But the evidence is always there. It leads to no change of life. If you really are seeking a revival, God must be at the center. Amen. Now, if you look in some of the in, uh, Acts chapter, in Acts chapter 4, for instance, verse, um, verse 21. After further threats, they let them go. They could not decide how to punish them because all the people were doing what? All the people were doing what? They were glorifying God for what had happened. Now, we know the story, the background, Acts chapter 3, Peter and John had just healed the man at the, tape, at, the, at, the, at the gate, beautiful, and he was causing an opera in the city. In verse, in verse 4, it says that, but many who heard the message believed. So the number of men who believed grew to about 5,000. You see, that is the man aspect of it. People, they believed, 
It grew to about 5,000. But what is going on? Now we see that one aspect of it is they're praising God. But as Christians, and this is another place we have to be very careful, especially as you live in a country like America, where everywhere, you know, the president has to say, God bless America. Everyone claims God. But which God are we talking about? There is a distinction as Christians. They said that these people were testifying to the good news of Jesus Christ. In Nigeria, too, we have some of the same issues, don't we? In Nigeria, it's even much more plural. We have 50% Muslims, 50% Christians. And so quite often, everybody says, we are all worshiping what? The same God. Now, where is the obvious difference? Now, at one point, they told them, do not actually preach in this thing. This is verse 6. They gather at verse 7. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them, by what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, I'm reading verse 8, said to them, rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this. Amen. You and all people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth whom you crucified. Or verse, 12, uh, verse 11. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Any revival that does not have the name of Jesus Christ at the center is not authentic. Yes, sir. Now remember, we're not saying that praising and having a good time in the presence of the Lord is not important. We're saying to what end? Do not forget that they said 5,000 people were saved. But saved to what? If the name of Jesus Christ, who has been crucified, but God has, been, God has raised from the dead, is not there, then it is a revival that is inauthentic. So we started with, there is an excellent and exuberant praise of God, but there is a proclamation of the name of Jesus Christ. Third thing, verse 8. Remember, they gathered Peter and brought Peter in and said, by what name? You, by what power or what name do you do this? And Peter spoke, right? Peter spoke on his own, wasn't it? He just spoke on his own. Peter haven't gone to school. Peter haven't devised carefully, worded, articulate, poetic. And he started to, is that what, is that what he says? Then Peter what? Filled with the Holy Spirit. You see, the music that was here is, is, was rousing, isn't it? But I can tell you that you can get almost the same kind of rousing music anywhere else, isn't it? If it is not music that is filled with the Spirit, we are doing something else. Ephesians 5.18 says, keep on being what? Filled with the Spirit. What, does, what comes next? Can someone put it up there? Keep on being filled with the Spirit. Verse 19 says, Ephesians 5.19, it leads to something. Ephesians 5, 19, or let me just say verse 18 again. Do not, get, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be what? Filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs of the Spirit. Sing and make melody from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks. See the praise of God again. Always giving thanks to the Father for everything. How? in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, what I'm trying to say here is that if we have to have God at the center, it is the Trinitarian God we have at the center. With praise to the Father, proclaiming the name of Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit. If you don't have that, you don't have an authentic revival. God it must be at the center. And it is from the center that it now echoes out to every other aspect. Every other thing is made by man. And if it is made by man, it can be counterfeited and replicated. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. So when we are going back to the heart of worship, 
And you have to go back to the heart of worship. Someone once said, missions exist because worship does not. You see, when everyone all over the earth will be worshiping God, we will not be talking about missions again. We go for missions because we want the worship of God. Missions exist because worship does not. So we are going back to the heart of worship. When we have God at the center, we now start to talk about how we reach the nations, which is exactly what happened here. Remember, 5,000 people what? Believed, but they believed on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So when we are praying, we are praying first for ourselves. Why? Ephesians 5.18 said, you should do what? Be filled with the Spirit. It starts to lead to you having communications with God, singing songs and all that. But does it stop there? No. This is the place we always miss out. Ephesians 5.21 to 32 starts to tell us about people who are filled with the Spirit. What does it mean? Now we are leaving church. When we are in church or we are in our quiet times, we used to sing, make melody in our heart and all that. But the feeling of the Spirit that centers on the Lord Jesus and gives thanks to the Father has impact in other aspects of our lives. Wives, submit to your husbands. And husbands do what? Love your wives. So therefore, if there's a true revival with God at the center, our marriages start to be affected. And that's how chapter 5 ends. But does it only end there? No, it goes to chapter 6. Children do what? Obey your parents in the Lord. But parents do not also provoke your children unto anger. So it doesn't only touch our marriages, it touches our families as well. Does it end there? No. Workers, submit to your masters. And masters, treat your, um, uh, your, your workers well because you have one master. So it also affects our workplaces as well. Praise the name of the Lord. So when we are asking for an authentic revival, again, remember, if we started from, we just want to fix our marriages. There are methods for that. It ought not to be spirit-filled. You can go to psychologists for that. If it starts from, well, we just want to find methods to train our children. Well, you may do it. You may go in a particular way, but it may not work for another person. But if God is at the center, remember, it is centering on God that starts to reverberate. Now, if we go back to Acts chapter 4, and I, will close, I, I want to finish now. Don't forget what is happening in Acts chapter 4. What is happening in the book of Acts? Again, I said I would love to walk 1 to 4 with you, but listen. When the Lord Jesus Christ died and he rose again, he told the disciples that they would be his witnesses from Jerusalem to the uttermost part of the world. He said, but they should tarry in Jerusalem unto what? Power comes from on high. Now, Acts 1, 8 says, you will be my witnesses from where? Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria to the uttermost part of the earth. Now, check this. In Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 2, the Spirit comes down. They start to witness. They do all that in the whole of Jerusalem and Judea. By Acts chapter 8, they move to Samaria. By Acts chapter 10, Peter has reached Cornelius, who is a Gentile. In other words, if we are asking for a revival, it cannot only affect our church. It cannot only affect our marriages. It must affect our cities. It must affect our nations. That has always been the plan. So this little thing that happened with this particular man at the Gate Beautiful was in the plan of God by sending the Spirit to witness to the Lord Jesus Christ reverberating throughout the whole land. Yes. That mission has not finished. So you are brought into a time like this in Katy to witness a revival in your homes, a revival in your life, a revival in your homes, a revival in river of life. A revival in Katy, a revival in Houston, a revival in the United States of America, and a revival to the uttermost parts of the earth. And so I want to encourage us that what we do here, like at this Friday, may not be very convenient, but you can already hear the spirit of the Lord already moving in the songs. There are many other songs we could have sung, 
When Larry opened up and we started singing about the blood of Jesus Christ, I said, fantastic. We are bringing back the Lord. And I think the second song as well spoke about the blood. Why? Because it is only because Jesus Christ died and Jesus Christ rose again that there is hope that all the nations will turn to God. And so we are looking for character, these characteristics of revival. God at the center. People, unbelievers, coming to Christ, they are praising God. But believers' lives being transformed. And they speak in the boldness and the power of the Spirit. It all happens when we go back to God and put him at the center. Praise the name of the Lord. So I just want us to sing one song for me. If you sing one song for me. We sang a lot of songs that is directing and bringing us back to God. Bringing us back to God and putting God at the center. But I want to sing a song that speaks to the resurrection power that can happen in our life. I don't know whether you are in an ashes condition today. Or the resurrection power that can bring life to our marriages. Or the resurrection power that can bring life to our cities. A very simple song. But I want us to sing it in this knowledge of the Father being praised because of the witness of the Son's death and resurrection in the power of the Spirit. Out of the ashes of my dying today, I see the breaking of a brand new day Amen. in which the name of the Lord will be glorified. I don't know if you know it. She knows it. She knows it. But it's very simple. But you, at least you can accompany us. Out of the ashes of my dying today, I see the breaking of a brand new day in which the name of the Lord alone is glorified. I see the breaking of a brand new day out of the ashes of the ashes of my dying today. The breaking, I see the breaking of a brand new day, in which the name, in which the name of the Lord alone is glorified. I see the breaking of a brand new day, out of the ashes, out of the ashes of my dying. Today I see the breaking, breaking of a brand new day, in which the name, in which the name of the Lord alone is glorified. I see the breaking of a brand new One more time. Out of the ashes, the ashes. Of my dying today, I see the breaking, breaking of a brand new day, in which the name, which the name of the Lord alone is glorified. I see the breaking of a brand. Lord, we lift the name of the crucified and the risen Lord of all the earth tonight. We thank you for the power of the Spirit, O oh God, amongst us, that is there to testify of the good news of Jesus Christ. We lift him up in this place tonight in the name of Jesus. Lord, we proclaim that Jesus is Lord of all. Jesus is Lord of our lives. Jesus is Lord of our marriages. Jesus is Lord of our families. Jesus is Lord in our businesses. Jesus is Lord in Katy. Jesus is Lord in Houston. Jesus is Lord in Texas. Jesus is Lord in the U.S. We lift the name of Jesus Christ high tonight. And Lord, we recognize 
that this same Jesus, in whose name there is no other name found, that there is no salvation is found in no other, he died for us. He died that we may be reconciled to you. He died that the world may be reconciled to you. The word tells us that God was in Christ hugging the world back to himself. But we thank you that he is risen. We thank you that he is no longer there. Why look ye for the dead among the living? For the living among the dead, he is not there. And Father, in the midst of the crisis and the persecution of our day, you look for a generation of people that will stand tall. For these people were told not to speak about the Lord again. And they said, you judge whether we should obey God or we should obey man. Father, we know that the times are terrible in the land. We know that your people are being persecuted. The rulers have set themselves together to take counsel against the Lord's anointed. But we thank you that we see in this witness that it's not the first time. It's not the first time. Father, we pray that concerning those that are here, concerning all those who call upon your name, that you will fill them with your spirit and that they will speak your word boldly in the name of Jesus. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you do it again. Do it again, Lord. Revive our hearts in the midst of the year. Lord God Almighty, in your mercy, bring about a revival in this place. Hear the cry, O oh God, of your people. For we cannot manufacture a revival. <coughs> Lord, we cannot bring about water from a rock. We serve a God who is able to bring about rivers of living water, making them streams that bring life. You said, Come unto me, all oh, you who are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Come and drink of me, for out of the belly of those that believe shall flow rivers of living water. Lord, we ask that you do it again. We pray, O oh God, that we will see lives transformed. We pray, O oh Lord God, that we will see marriages renewed. Father, we pray that we will see families reconciled. We pray, O oh Lord God Almighty, that we will see righteousness exalted in the nation and in businesses. And that truly men will know that Jesus is Lord over all. We ask this in his name we pray. Amen.